Repairing another Stuart Twin Victoria. This is part one, assessment and overview. Quite a few viewers have messaged me and asked, where do I get all these engines that I make videos of me repairing? The answer to that is, quite a few of them are from my own personal collection. And some of them are from a friend of mine's personal collection. The rest come from members of the public who contact me and send me their engines for repair. And this particular engine is one of the latter. I was asked if I could repair it. This of course is a Stuart Models Twin Victoria. Initially I received a video of it running very badly, but I couldn't really see any great details. But now I have it on the bench, I can see exactly what's wrong with it quite a lot. If you look at the play here in the big end, it's fairly excessive. The engine's quite well made and very finely finished. I must admit I'm quite happy with the standard of the engineering, but there are certain things that are not right. A lot of the valve gear is loose and there's quite a lot of play in the crosshead. The best thing to do is to run it. And the first thing that becomes apparent is it sounds like a pneumatic drill. And it wasn't self-starting, it was reluctant to start how to give it a push. What I'm going to do now is slow down the video so you'll be seeing this in slow motion. And I'm going to have a close look at what the crosshead's doing at the end of its travel. It sounds to me like the piston is actually hitting the cylinder cover as the piston rod is out at its full length. And how do I know this? In the same way a doctor diagnoses a patient, I suppose, I've seen it before many times. And if you watch the crosshead, it actually jumps. Here it comes, and up it goes. And back again. And it jumps here. But not at the other end, it reverses quite well. Also, there is some slack in the crosshead that may have been put in there on purpose to accommodate the problem. And there is an excessive amount of slack in the big end. I don't think this is where, I think someone's actually tried to ream this out to alleviate the problem, but I may be wrong on that. I find it quite hypnotic watching this, it's uh, just going back and forth. There it goes one way and now it goes another way. I'm in danger of slipping into a coma though, so I'd better stop it. By the magic of video, by stopping it precisely in this position, you can clearly see the crosshead jumping at the end of the stroke. It's quite a useful tool as a video camera. I often use it to diagnose faults, because the video camera sees things that I do not see. I suppose it would be a good thing to use for a self-diagnosis on hemorrhoids. That way you could just email the doctor a video and say, what do you think of these? It would save any embarrassment in the doctor's surgery when he gets the glove out and the lubricant. Maybe I should make a video series called Medical Self-Examination for Beginners Using a Video Camera. Anyway, that's enough about medical problems and back to the engine. What you can see clearly here is that there is something wrong with the valve events. What is supposed to happen is that the eccentric on the crankshaft moves an eccentric rod which in turn moves an arm, which in turn moves a transversely mounted shaft on which an arm is located, which is supposed to be firmly clamped to this shaft, and it's not in this case, it's wobbling about. This is the main arm that moves the valve, so it's impossible to get good valve events. Here you can see just how much movement there is. The engine's stationary, and I'm just moving these freehand and not much is happening. This is no good at all. These engines need to be quite precisely set in the valve department. They need to have early admission. If the admission is late, you're going to get some clunking to start with. So this is all going to have to come apart and be repaired. And to further illustrate this, I'm moving the valve while the engine is running and you can hear that suddenly the engine's beats change and it's not always self-starting. The main bearings are slightly unorthodox. They do not use split bearings. And coincidentally, on the last twin Victoria that I worked on, the arrangement was exactly the same. Split bearings are used for taking up wear, but luckily in this case, the bearings are not worn. In this clip, you can clearly see how much movement there is in the crosshead. Quite a ridiculous amount, not to mention how much movement is in the big end itself. Everything is a very sloppy fit here, and something looks very suspicious to me. These components will all be removed and repaired where necessary. Also, I'm going to take the cylinder off and take the cover off and have a look at the piston arrangement. 
A far less important problem with this engine is that the veneer's coming away from the baseboard, and that doesn't look terribly good. I may be able to fix this, but I can't do much about the chunk that's missing out of the baseboard in the centre of the picture down at the bottom. To fix the veneer problem, I'd have to be very careful and remove it and re-glue it. But before I can start on this engine, it is in a queue at the moment. Unfortunately, there's only me, myself and I working on all these projects. I'm now concentrating on the steamboat project for a week or two. There's a lot of work to do on that yet. It's about to be transferred to the main bench for some work inside the hull. And for anyone who's interested, I'm going to be putting some items on the mainsteam.co.uk website in the Use Models section. One of them being this small locomotive that you can see, which is absolutely beautifully made. I already have a video on YouTube about this engine, and I will put links to that video on the page where the engine's for sale. I will also be putting some other items on at the same time, and they're well worth looking at whether you're a collector or whether you want to use them as practical running models. But that's it for now. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.